There are over 40 plus classes in Tactics Ogre Reborn, and it can be hard to determine exactly what class you should use. In this video, I want to cover 5 classes that you can bring into almost any battle and do well. So let's start things off with the Rune Fencer. The Rune Fencer or Valkyrie may not be one of the strongest classes, but they make up for this in their versatility. First, Rune Fencers can move through water tiles giving them the ability to flank choke points that hold up other units along rivers or canals. This ability also allows them to chase down waterborne units like octopuses and engage them in melee. Next, Rune Fencers and Valkyries are one of five units that can use spears. Spears allow Rune Fencers extra reach and the ability to hit multiple units with their basic melee attack. Attacking from two spaces away will also prevent an enemy from being able to counterattack as you will be out of their range provided they don't also have a spear equipped, of course. Finally, for the Rune Fencers and Valkyries, they can use some healing magic and missile-based magic attacks like Deadshot or Lightning Bow. This opens up a lot of utility, as once your Rune Fencer has taken some damage, you can pull them back and use them as a healer or release spells from range. Or, if an enemy is resistant to your melee damage, you can pelt them with spells instead. Versatility is a strength in any unit, and speaking of versatile units, let's move on to the Vartan. If you haven't been using Canopus, who you should have recruited early on in Chapter 1, you've been missing out. Canopus is a Vartan, another versatile and powerful class when used effectively. The first and most obvious fact that makes Vartans versatile is their ability to fly, paired with a good movement stat. Vartan are great for flying behind enemy lines and taking out their support units or even the enemy commander. This ability to fly is then paired with decently high damage output as well. Using an axe or hammer in melee, Vartans can dish out high damage, especially if you've used their mobility to grab a couple of damage boost cards off the battlefield. Now add that a Vartan can also equip a one-handed bow along with their melee weapon, and you get amazing tactical versatility in combat. Finally, if all of that isn't enough to get you excited about Vartans, they can also use missile magic like the Rune Fencers can. With Vartans, you can fly over the battlefield, outmaneuver your enemy, all the while raining down arrows and magic before moving in to finish them off with a well-timed melee attack. What more could you ask for? Well, maybe a Dragoon? Dragoons, you say? But aren't those just for fighting beasts and dragons? Well, yes, they are beast and dragon slayers. And if that alone isn't enough to make them cool and useful, they are also hardy tanks that can dish out high damage even to puny little human foes. Dragoon's HP stat is right up there with knights, and their ability to wield mighty two-handed swords allows them to dish out great damage. They can also use the rampart ability, just like knights, to control the area around them. The true strength of Dragoons, though, comes in their ability to totally wreck beasts and dragons with only one or two hits, and to make their allies more effective against these creatures as well. Dragoons have the Beast Bane and Dragon Bane abilities, which grant higher melee damage to allies against each ability's target creature, as well as the Beast Slayer and Dragon Slayer abilities, which greatly increase the Dragoons' damage output against either dragons or beasts. The Slayer abilities have allowed me to take out dragons and beasts in a single blow, though sometimes it takes two. But either way, the Dragoon turns dragons and beasts from a serious tanky threat to a minor nuisance. But maybe you'd rather make friends with these powerful creatures. For that, you will need a Beast Tamer. The Beast Tamer isn't that great at combat and doesn't have the versatility of other units on this list. But if you want to have beasts and dragons in your party, they are essential. Beast Tamers can subdue beasts and dragons and bring them over to your side using their unique recruit skills. In order to recruit one of these creatures though, you'll have to first reduce its health to 10% or less, and then move your Beast Tamer next to it and use the subdue or tame skill depending on whether it is a beast or a dragon you are trying to recruit, so be sure to equip the right skill before going into battle. It may take a few tries, but once you have a few of these creatures on your side, you'll be happy you put in the work. 
but beast tamers are also useful in other ways, such as fighting against beasts and empowering your own. Their Repel Beast and Repel Dragon passive skills make them excellent at tanking against beasts or dragons, because this skill allows the beast tamer to evade the target creatures up to two times before the next turn. On the other hand, if you like using beasts and dragons in your party, bringing a beast tamer along with them can buff them to do maximum damage. This is done through the Empower Dragon and Empower Beast passive skills. Beast tamers allow you to fight, recruit, and empower dragons and beasts, and buff up your ranks with these powerful creatures. But if it's power you're after, then maybe you should consider a Swordmaster. The Swordmaster is a devastating whirlwind of buffs, debuffs, and damage potential. Swordmaster's abilities allow them to do high damage with their two-handed katanas and turn them into a truly devastating attacker. A Swordmaster buffed up with Mighty Strike and Falling Blade can do massive damage in one attack, but their usefulness does not end there. Swordmasters also have several buffing and debuffing abilities. For example, Lion Dance strengthens multiple nearby units, increasing their damage output, Harvest Dance provides healing to multiple nearby units, and Bellows Dance fortifies nearby units, granting them higher defense. Then there are debuffs like Comely Dance, which inflicts Breached and lowers the defenses of nearby enemies. And I should also mention that when a Swordmaster uses a buff, it also buffs him as well, thereby multiplying his damage output that much more. Swordmasters are excellent damage multipliers, and you should keep at least one in your combat party at all times, as soon as you have access to one. Now, you might be asking, but eights, how do I get these classes? Well, as long as you've progressed a few battles into Chapter 3, you should be able to buy class marks for Beast Tamer, which is actually available in Chapter 2, Dragoon, and Swordmaster. You probably already have a Vartan and a Rune Fencer from Chapter 1, but if not, you can buy class marks for or recruit a Rune Fencer from the shop, and Vartan class marks drop from winged units. If you don't have a winged unit, you'll have to recruit one in battle using the Recruit Human skill before you can change its class to Vartan, as a winged units are the only ones that can be Vartans. These classes may not all be the greatest classes overall, but each one brings something unique and powerful to your party and should not be overlooked. If you liked the video, please let me and YouTube know by hitting that thumbs up button, as that really helps me out. And if you want more tips for Tactics Ogre Reborn, watch this tips video I made for you here. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and keep on gaming.